The program you're about to see is made possible through the financial support of people like you. We hope you'll join the thousands of people who make our programming possible. Become an In the Life member by clicking on the Donate Now button on our website. Since 1958, AARP has been the foremost authority and advocate for the aging American population. Twenty years later, SAGE, a national social service and advocacy organization dedicated to LGBT senior citizens, was founded. AARP's president, Jenny Chin Hansen, and Michael Adams, executive director of SAGE, discuss the importance of AARP identifying gay elders as part of their constituency and the meaningful collaboration by these important organizations. It's great to see you here and actually have a chance to sit down and talk a little bit. I, I think really the first time we met was when I had a chance to mm -hmm. uh, be the speaker you know, at the SAGE conference, which was the fourth conference you had on the focus on aging in particular, but um, a celebration of your 30th anniversary right. as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, uh, Michael, I was just so touched and honored uh, that I could be there. And I learned so much from having that opportunity. ARP has always been about all people who age, and, uh, and the whole principle of aging with dignity and respect is something that is our overarching uh, uh, set of principles. Our work in understanding that there are, in, in the aging population, um, a, a very strong LGBT community. That is part of the group that we represent, who are our members. What kind of response did AARP get from its constituents, and was there any pushback or criticism of AARP support of the conference? There was none. I mean, uh, the fact that people um, see that our inclusiveness, our membership is made up of, uh, f of close to 40 million people. Uh, about half of our population is under 65, and half of it is over 65. So we really are quite an umbrella uh, organization with these core issues that do, do ultimately unify people, mm -hmm. and that is recognizing having health care access and quality is one, having that kind of economic security that affects us and, you know, we have the blessing, but also the challenge sometimes of living a long life but worrying about money and then being part of a, a community that we've called livable communities that are supportive of our, our well-being and our contribution. The more that um, AARP is, is um, able to uh, demonstrate that inclusivity around LGBT issues and be public about it, 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 it seems to create a sense of, of course, of, of course that LGBT people should be part of these discussions. And right. that shouldn't be a remarkable thing, and, but it certainly is an indication of some of the progress that we've made. There's a lot of negotiation going on on Capitol Hill around the contours of what we hope is going to be really comprehensive health care reform legislation. Some of that's focused on um, you know, health disparities, cultural competency, et cetera. Right. Um, and the reality is an organization like SAGE that doesn't have a deep presence in Washington isn't really part of those discussions. And yet, the interests of our constituents are very much uh, embedded in those discussions. So there are discussions about data collection and the importance of, of collecting comprehensive data uh, on health issues so that the country can learn more and plan for the future. Data collection is one area that LGBT people in general have been almost entirely excluded from, especially when it's government sponsored. Just two weeks ago, we were on the phone with a policy director at AARP going through specific health care um, issues and what the concerns of SAGE are in those issues. And knowing that, that AARP can then take those concerns and integrate them into discussions, I think it's, it's a really important thing. Now, whether we'll see that translate into actual legislative provisions this year, we don't know that, right? That right. takes time. But we know what the first step toward that is getting getting the issue out there. One of the things I, I gave in my speech uh, at, at the SAGE conference was just uh, some of the um, barriers for, say, mm -hmm. partners who are somebody who goes to a nursing home yes. and the partner 
uh, from a legal standpoint now cannot necessarily uh, be a, a part of that process in that same way. And so that's a very specific issue of, of how laws define certain uh, relationships and all. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, you know, one of the things that ARP is really uh, advancing and has pushed forward in healthcare reform, uh, and which we hope can, you know, still stay in, in focus, is the creation of care systems uh, right. that are more home and community based. Mm -hmm. And and when you do it in a broader sense, it allows for uh, partners, couples to support each other quite differently. This is this is a really important area and areas where I think that we can work even more closely together. I mean, there are some very unfortunate realities within the LGBT um, context for older adults. Lack of primary caregivers, lack of adult children, um, disconnection from families of origin. There's, there's evidence indicating that LGBT older adults are actually at heightened risk for premature institutionalization. Having to go to a nursing home well before it would otherwise be necessary because there's simply nobody um, to provide the kind of assistance that would otherwise allow people to stay in their homes to age in place. And the, the reality is, is the way that organizations like SAGE and the LGBT community have had to address that is by building community structures. Right. So that's why we have at SAGE friendly visitor programs and volunteer caregiver programs and things of that nature. For us, the, the notion of community-focused uh, support and care is critical because without it, our constituents are going to end up in really unfortunate situations. They often do. You know, our support for helping develop the structures on which the communities can, can um, circle around to, to fill it in because even right now we're w so well aware that 80 percent of anything that has to do with long-term care is really done informally mm -hmm. you know right. only 20 percent is really kind of governmentally uh, financially supported so it's really those of us who are our families communities mm -hmm. that really take up that slack and I think especially you know uh, given the uh, the statistics that we're aware of with vulnerability of yeah. the uh, LGBT community that much more you have to have at least that 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 architecture on which to build that strength of support sage and many organizations like us are a lot of our work gets done by volunteers and and people tend to assume that that all of our volunteers are LGBT and although many of them are the reality is that we have many volunteers who are straight allies uh, who uh, come in because they recognize the importance of the work and they want to they want to help out what do you see as being um, some of what maybe is the shared opportunity for, for straight allies who are uh, interested in learning more about and being supportive of LGBT um, aging issues or just LGBT issues in general? I, I think it comes down to the fact that um, when we get to know each other as people, you know, as they say, a lot of the other packaging in which mm -hmm. we are um, has a much different way of being seen but for the fact that there's work to be done together. I mean I think about um, a couple of my college friends who uh, did not um, come out at the time we were in college and are now aware of the fact that I'm in this role mm -hmm. and they're so happy that the ability to, to have somebody who happens to be straight begin to uh, be a part of the team of raising these uh, uh, these matters that oftentimes are invisible. So I think the more we get to that point in our society, the more this crossing together, you know, of what our identities are, whether it's gay straight uh, or whether it's race uh, uh, in terms of differentiators, um, we have to find that common denominator that unites us as human beings. I just want to thank you for taking the time and for all of your support and for just uh, uh, really being such a great ally. Thank you uh, for your working with ARP and for your particular leadership of SAGE. Thank you. Thank you.